This episode is an introduction on the topic of event sourcing. Imagine now this time we're at a coffee shop and we have a coffee shop application with a coffee order that may have a current status, um, coffee drink type and beans origin and so on and so forth. And in a typical CRUD based application where you have the current state of the system, you would store that in a POJO in the, your domain entities and these entities would contain then the current status quo. You could also store that in the database in a relational table, something like that. You have called a coffee orders with uh, status types and bean origins and so on and so forth. And the current status is always reflected in these objects, right? But in an event source system, what you do instead, you're storing events. And events is everything that happens to your system. Having that said, by changing it to events, you would have events like order placed. You place an order as a customer and then the order is placed. And then afterwards the order is accepted and the coffee brew is started and so on and so forth. So these are events all everything that happened. And the point of it is for events, they have to be atomic in terms of the use cases. So that means everything that happens to your system from the outside or from the inside is actually an atomic action. And after that action has to be uh, was applied, there is an atomic event, something like order placed. So the, the, the smallest portion of information you can store in your system, like logging the use cases, everything that happened, right? And the order has placed, the order gets accepted and so on and so forth. And however, as they happened in the past, so the events that are stored have happened and actually have finished in the past. So they are immutable. You can't undo them anymore. The order has been placed no matter what happens next. Then you may accept or reject the order. That's another story. But um, what I just explained in the last video with the intentions, the order has been placed by the customer. That's, that's a fact. So events um, do not reflect actions. They reflect facts ac after actions have happened. So now the order has been placed. That's in the past. That's not changeable. It was the case. There may be something happening up front um, um, afterwards, after that event, but that's a different story. As I said, they should reflect the use cases, like the order has been placed by the customer, so there may be a place order use case, and then afterwards, uh, wait for your drink or um, um, pay for your drink use case, and so on and so forth. And the barista may have other use cases, like um, start the, uh, the um, coffee brew, and so on and so forth but the events are what happened afterwards. And now what you store in your system is you apply all these events and you store just all these events in, for example, your event store or in, in a table in a database. And what you do, you then apply, if you wanna have the current status quo of the system, all the events from just the beginning in time until the last uh, point in time and by doing so if you apply them you then you kind of calculate the current state it's like a money transactions if you have if you open an account and the amount is probably zero and then you put in some money and you take uh, money um, out and so on and so forth and if you want to have your current balance you do so by applying all these transactions and by calculating okay what do i have starting from zero plus and minus and so on and so forth. And the same, and this actually is a good example for an event source system. And the same you would do if you built such an event source system for yourself by just storing the events and then calculating um, the current status quo afterwards. And having that said, you then have a single source of truth in these events. Because sometimes what happens is that for um, we would applic uh, applications because of law issues and so on and so forth. You would have to lock um, everything that happens to your system anyway in a kind of audit lock. 
But then, eventually, if there is a bug in the system, and then you have an audit log that tells you, oh, something happened that way, but your current status quo says something different, if you're in a CRUD-based application, that is a problem because the current status quo is all you have in code and the audit log is just a log. So actually what you're doing in an event source system, you take the audit log and do it as the your own only uh, one and only state anyway. So the whole application is built around that event audit source log. And yeah, this is basically how it works. And the, uh, the thing is, so what you have to mention are these, uh, these points that they are immutable events. They immu um, the events happened uh, and finished in the past. They have to be atomic and reflect the use cases. So everything that happens to your application, because then what you actually could do later on is take these event events and use them as an audit log because that's everything that happened in your application anyway, right? So you could do them as atomic as you like, like user locked in, user registered, and so on and so forth. And by doing so, as I said, you elim eliminate the current status quo in uh, from your database, or at least at first, and take these event sourced events as a single source of truth. And everything else is then cal calculated on demand. And this is basically the concept of event source systems.